So let me start now with uh, what uh, actually led to the most humiliating day of my personal and professional life and life as an entrepreneur that led to all of this. It all started several years after I graduated from Stanford Business School here. So I was in many of your seats uh, uh, many years ago and then several years out after working at a bunch of great companies, I decided that I had a vision of my own. And what I had come up with, because my, batch, my background had been in both psychology and engineering and business, my, the vision that I had was that with the emerging technology at the time, we could create a self-coaching software that every employee within every company could use to coach their own, self, their own career through the company. And that uh, I thought that, it could, that every company would be interested in having people be self-guided in their career management because they would have an in, internal coach that we would, uh, we would create for them. Because of my engineering background, I ended up uh, actually coding uh, a prototype that was interactive and pretty interesting. And I cold called a bunch of Fortune 500 CEOs. And to my amazement, because I was on fire with this vision and I was so believing that it was going to happen, I got almost a dozen uh, CEOs of Fortune 500 companies and people of that caliber, one of the most senior uh, people of, uh, from venture capital, uh, community come in as a personal investor, and a, uh, one of the most famous authors in business, a whole bunch of first class people got, in, got uh, interested and we raised about a million and a half in seed financing and later on $20 million in, uh, in the Series A financing uh, from uh, major venture, venture capital. So during this phase of me going out, uh, talking to people about the vision of the company and what was possible in the work that we were, we were doing, I was all positive, I was all energized, I was all vision, and it was magnetic. Everybody I talked to wanted to be a part of it, and I also ended up attracting a world-class group of people who wanted to work with me in, in the company, including one of my buddies from business school who ended up becoming president of the company. So that was all great stuff, and we got one um, major Fortune 100 company to actually pay for the rights to use the software that didn't even exist yet that really got us off the ground. Now fast forward two years uh, into the, the company forming and all of these wonderful things happening, uh, our offices was in downtown Palo Alto and one day uh, I went out to get lunch and I, uh, I strolled back to my offices in downtown Palo Alto and I walked upstairs, we were on the second floor and my heart sank when I walked upstairs because what I saw is that in our conference room, kind of doubling as our boardroom, what I saw was that my chairman of the board was sitting there my president, my buddy from business school at heart to run the company with me uh, was sitting there. My most senior uh, director was sitting there. My most senior vice president was sitting there, all awkwardly waiting to have an intervention with me. Uh, this was a palace coup. And what had happened is that during these two years, I had shifted from this extraordinarily positive magnetic uh, visionary that I, that I was that attracted and, uh, everything to the company and, and started it to a monster that nobody wanted to work with. Uh, to a controlling, distrusting, micromanaging, always negative, always angry, always pissed person who was trying to make everything right. Uh, and, base, and I was so not able to hear any feedback people were giving me that my president, my vice president, had no choice but to go above my head and have a palace coup because there was no listening in me that was happening at the time. And uh, as the board started telling me the feedback about what was going on and, uh, uh, and the feedback that they were getting, the way, of course, I engaged with them was lashing out in a way that, of course, totally proved the point that I was not a person that could listen to a single word anybody was saying anymore. That became the most profoundly painful moment of my life as a professional. And uh, the problem that I had was that I could not actually walk away. Usually, ordinarily, I would have either lashed out or walked away. And I did not have the luxury of that because I would brought in everybody with the money. I would brought in the clients. I would brought in the, uh, the, the, everybody who was working there. I did not have the luxury of walking away. I needed to stay and see this thing through, even though that day I was stripped of a lot of my power. 
which a lot of entrepreneurs are familiar with. Venture backed software company that happens a lot to founding members of the company, who at some point are shown to be the ones who are destroying their own vision and have to be pushed aside or changed in their role and all of that stuff. Uh, so I had to stay, and, and staying was so profoundly painful because imagine walking into an office space every single day, working with people that you were certain had totally betrayed you and betrayed your trust. And I was so convinced that they had betrayed me and betrayed my trust for self-serving purposes. So imagine the amount of pain I experienced day after day living with, with what it is that, uh, that, uh, that I had to, to be with, uh, with the company. And that uh, started a whole series of questions including uh, the questions of, so who is the real me? Is the real me the person who was that incredible magnetic visionary that, that, that brought everybody to this company? Or is, the, or is the real me this monster that nobody wanted to work with anymore? Who is the real me? How had I, how, how had I shifted from one to the other? Was this shift permanent? Is there a way that I could, have, I could now go back to what, I, to what used to be? Uh, are these people that I'm interacting with truly people who were betraying me for self-serving purposes, or was there another uh, solution? Was there another uh, explanation? These were all the questions that were in my mind, and I could not answer them at the time because I was literally in a daze for about a week, not, not able to even sort out my thoughts. And that started about 15 years of uh, working on myself and also research that eventually led to the body of work that I have on positive intelligence, and all of the things that, uh, that I'll be talking to you about today. Gradually, there were all these discoveries to research and my own personal experience that led to the work that we do today. And the question was about trying to answer, how is it that we self-sabotage? How is it that we go from one to the other mode of ourselves? And uh, what are the ways that we can, we can actually shift, uh, shift that orientation?